thing I'm wiping because it's all a bit, it's all a bit hot in here and it's going to get even hotter. So I'm having to wipe my sweat down a little. So you know how they say these things. They say you say something into the air and it comes about, and you know, I'm the least religious person you'll have, you'll ever find, you know that. My only religion is my people and God, and that's it. Everything else is somebody else's problem. So remember last week we were just in. Remember, Zainab? Yes. We were just in, and what did I say? I said, perhaps we need to get Shawara <laughs> into here. Seriously, I, need to I said that. Right and guess who is here, people? Omoyele Shawara himself. Yes, I'm talking about the one and only you see you cannot photocopy some people yele is one of those you cannot put words in their mouth yele is one of those they are individual in their individuality they are focused they are fearless and they're not afraid of criticism that's why i felt we had to have him here now as you all know he's been around the rodeo once you know 2019, he contested, he didn't win. And then, yes, six months, eight months or so later, we then had revolution now. And then all of a sudden, they took him away. We didn't hear from him, yada, 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 and all of that legal stuff happened. But as soon as he was out, we started hearing from him again. So now, as you all know, 2023, he's contesting again. He's contesting to be, to lead, to be your president, to lead Nigeria. He's seeking for your mandate. Now, because INEC, we're now officially in the space where we can talk to candidates properly, as in electioneering has now begun. I think this is week two. See, some people are just coming back yesterday and mentioned on it. I did not say any names. They arrived yesterday. You people know my pigeon is rubbish. Them arrived for yesterday for private jet. I'm trying to co copy Yvonne or high for now. Them get here yesterday for private jet. Okay, then said they're ready. Said they're ready to lead you. But some people never left. They've been here. They've been walking the beat and they've had their manifesto ready. My people, damn for conversationers, be ready. My guest today is none other than. Everybody's Mr. Revolution. <laughs> Omoyele Shawari. Welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Good to see you. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yes. It's been a good while. The last time we had a bit of a ding dong and a ding ding. It's all right. That's all right. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, welcome. I'm so pleased. As you can tell, I'm pleased to have you here. When your people got in touch with me, they didn't know I had actually said that out on air. Wow. So when they say, put these things out, it happens. That's how it happened with Peter Obi. And now it's happening with you. So really... It's an honor because I may be sitting in front of the next president of Nigeria. There's no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. You're that sure, are the you? The time is here. Really? Yes. Okay. Right, people, here's the telephone numbers. You know the studio line 0700 993 993 993. The female only line is 01465 7190. WhatsApp is 0809. Five nine seven five eight zero five. We are on our website, nigeriainfo.fm. On Twitter, we're on at nigeriainfo.fm. On Instagram, we are nigeriainfo.fm Lagos. YouTube, where you can see my sister again, you can see Yale's handsomeness. You know, this guy is all dressed up for me <laughs> today. You can see him, he's in a three piece suit. Yes, on YouTube at nigeriainfo99.3. And we are on Facebook, all streaming live, by the way. Nigeria Info 99.3. You know, you can get in touch with us by Skype. Those of you that are in the abroad, we will be looking forward to hear from you. We never have enough time. It seems like we have an hour and a half, but honestly, it just, yeah, it's just never enough. Fast. It yeah. does go very fast. Yes. So, Yele, you've been away. Yes. Let's start with, and we have to, I haven't had a chat with you since this whole revolution thing. Mm -hmm. In fact, the last time we saw was before, the week before the revolution. That's right. So, you contested in 2019 yes you lost um well i didn't lose really. you, well you didn't get up to 60,000 votes did you no they just allocated numbers to us <laughs> <laughs> okay this is gonna get interesting folks i told you yeah. so technically or officially you lost as far as you're concerned you didn't lose yes. so officially you lost 
Some six, eight months later, you then call for a revolution. Yes. Now, here's the issue, or should I say the question that I had in my head out of that is, how does somebody who contests within the same system to lead the people, yet wants to call for a revolution against the mandate of the people? Talk to me about that. Well, I've been all, I've always been talking about the revolution. My the revolutionary life mm -hmm. since my university days, and um, when I was contesting in 2018, I was talking about the revolution everywhere I went, both at home and abroad. That Nigeria is in need of a revolution, mm -hmm. and that we can take it both ways. We can take it by ballot, by the ballot, or we can take it on the streets. And um, when the ballot was uh, compromised, mm -hmm. I just kicked into gear two or three or four, whichever one you want to call it, which is what I've always believed in. Mm. And I believe that had I won the election, mm -hmm. that in itself would have been a revolution because all those revolutionary things I wanted to do, I would mm -hmm. have done as uh, president of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And so when I was arrested, just so you know, I was asked directly what I meant by re the revolution. And exactly. I said that uh, I want a the system to change completely. That it has to. The system has to be had to be overhauled completely. And he said, "Do you? Does it involve putting an end to the system as it is?" I said, "Yes." Do you want to put this on record? I said, "Yes." So they took um, almost. Uh, I think we did. And they interrogated me for over six hours. Wow! Just on that alone. Mm -hmm. And I came back the second time, asked me to repeat some of those things. I repeated. And they took me to court. So I swore on that oath uh, that I want a revolution. So there was never a time that I denied it, even though uh, they wanted to release me two weeks after I was arrested. But because I won't renounce the revolution now, because they sent a whole delegation to meet me. They said, okay, we'll leave you there until, you know, you rot in jail. Wow. Yeah. And I told them, I said, look, you know, you don't understand what's going on in the country. One day... You're going to come in here and beg me to leave. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. Five months later, knocked my cell and said, pack your things. So that was uh, December 24th, 2019. So <coughs> they just said, pack your things and, and get let's out. Go, let's go. And I said, no, I, I need to take care of myself. Yeah. And take a shower. Uh, you know, I don't mm -hmm. um, and I believe mm -hmm. anybody going to the so you go to the Kennedy. So when I was about to the I was I've been arrested two days before the protest hit the street. Oh, I, I was see. arrested the 3rd of August. The protest still took place in over 20 cities in Nigeria on the 5th of August. Oh, right. So you were in detention? Already, yeah. I mean, okay. I've been mean, I mean, I I abducted and detained. I think didn't know yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, most of them didn't know that. Uh, so they were shocked that in my head, regardless of my kidnap and uh, detention at that point, that people still came out. Okay. But this is what to tell you that the revolution did not stop because it was after we did revolution now that NSAT happened. Mm. And these are natural follow up to what we had called for. Before we did revolution, a lot of people didn't even think that you could confront the Buhari regime on the streets. Because after what they did to Chia, it's killing about 3,000 of them overnight over a small issue with the military. People were scared in the country. Mm. So let's talk about now what I did ask a question. What was it that you learned in that time that not only drives you to do this now, to come out again, but that you, you heard from the Nigerian people that motivates you? to want to lead. I, I realized that uh, the Nigerian people were actually waiting for my brand of politics or our brand of politics. Or let's say mine. Mm -hmm. And um, they really wanted a revolution and they still do now. It's just that sometimes when people talk about revolutions, they don't know that they don't happen overnight. The French Revolution took over 10 years before it finally hit. Uh, and the same for the Cuban Revolution. You know, there were people in the bush fighting, fighting, and one day they were able to get to the city and the same thing happened even to the American Revolution. It didn't happen overnight. You know, it's, it's usually a series of events, uh, including sometimes elections. And then these elections become very flawed, or they are rigged, and the people say to themselves, we cannot be fooled anymore. Okay. So when you see people like us participate in elections, mm -hmm. it's all part of the revolutionary process. Right. Because, because nobody would ever think that I'll be out of jail 
by now you know, or participate in an election because after I was taken to court, a judge, a Nigerian judge at the Federal High Court in Abuja ruled on my bail condition I can't leave Abuja. Okay. You've just it's said. never happened in Nigeria before that you're restricted to a city after you grant a bail. Mm. Yeah. So you're asking, what did I learn? I learned that the Nigerian people are seriously looking for a different direction. And okay. Yes. And that was the driving force that kept me going even after I left detention, after my brother was killed, after I was shot at, uh, after I was restricted. Don't forget that they've also charged me twice after mm. my release, still in Abuja. Uh, and my restriction was just lifted some three months ago to travel okay. out. But my international passport mm -hmm. is still with the government. Right. Okay. We're going to so talk about that. Um, here's the thing. You've said just now that the rigging of elections. Do you believe our electoral system is rigged? Yes, it's rigged against um, the people. Right, so if you believe it's rigged against the people, why then would you trust it to make you president? Because you said you're going to be the next president. Yes, I'm trusting the people right. to take charge of their destiny. Mm -hmm. And when they do so, it doesn't matter how the elections are handled, they will triumph. Okay, it's a good time for us to then talk about the democratic system that we have in Nigeria. Yes. In the world, you've got the presidential and you have the parliamentary. Yes. Which is your preference? I prefer the presidential, but in Why a is that? real, yeah, I like the real federalism, I mean, federal system, though, mm -hmm. like you have in the U.S., they have a president, but each and every one of the states have their own little autonomy. I mean, I don't want to see a federal government that's controlling traffic on the streets of Lagos. That's not the business of the federal government, or that is issuing driver's license to people. No, the role of the federal government should be limited to defense of the country, and several other issues that the federal government is involved with now should be controlled by states. Does so, that then fall into your idea of restructuring? Because one of the things that you write in your mandate is restructuring. Yes. Right. Tell me very briefly what, when you say restructuring, I've read it. So, but I want you to tell us very briefly what you mean by restructuring. What exactly do you intend to restructure? Give us three. Yes. Um, I won't give you that many. Oh, okay, because go ahead. The best way to restructure the country mm -hmm. is to change the Nigerian constitution, to completely scrap the 1999 constitution, bring everybody together to design a new constitution that accommodates what every... Because if you talk to different parts of... people in different parts of... The, the idea of restructuring is different. Some people want regional government, some people want state police, some people want bigger control of uh, the national pie, uh, which is revenue. So, except we all come to a place where we agree that these things should be included in the constitution, you're wasting your time. You can, you can do whatever you want with the constitution in terms of reforming it or uh, repackaging it. It won't solve the problem except that document is redone and is made to pass through a referendum. A referendum is my operating word. Right, so yes. that's what I was going to yes. say. So when you talk about a re um, restructuring, you go, you prefer the route of going for a referendum. Yes. Right, okay. So until you've done a referendum, how do you know the people want to restructure? That's the point about bringing them together. I, mean, I want to bring everybody together at the Sovereign National Conference. Mm -hmm. We would take but it But there to was a confab before. Well, it depends on the intention of the confab. The mm -hmm. confab we've had in the past have individual interests embedded in them. The one Obasanjo did was to corral people to let him continue as president of Nigeria at all time. That was the agenda. They just every other thing was a ruse. The one that uh, but an Arosanya report followed that confab. Yes, but the reason why this report was on carry weight is because the moment they don't satisfy their immediate needs, they don't follow through. Look at Jonathan. Jonathan did his own uh, constitution conference, so of confab. Everybody said it was the greatest, but Jonathan was looking for a seven-year tenure. That was what he wanted. And the moment he didn't get it, he jettisoned that because the confab report had been submitted to him before he left office. Why didn't he implement them when he had the power to do so? Okay. And he had a majority in the Nigerian Congress, the National Assembly. Okay. Here's a quote. One of the things that you said about restructuring from your mandate is true restructuring, and I'm quoting it, true restructuring should allow states to unlock the value of their own resources by themselves. Yes. You've talked about a constitutional change. Yes. 
that includes the executive That's list. That's what I'm saying. No, that all, includes all this the concurrent th- list. Yes, yes. But yes. are you making account for the fact that the Constitution currently says everything that grows below ground in any land belongs to the government? Yes. What comes above ground belongs to the people, to put it loosely. That's exactly what I'm saying. You know, it's the states, the people must come to a place where they say, look, we define this and we make it a law. It's in our books. It's in our law books. It's in our constitution. Mm-hmm. To say we control resources within this geographical region. You know, if it is, if you want to measure it in miles or kilometers, mm-hmm. that's the duty of the constitution. It's just like there's a continental chef, and like, and most people don't know this, that if you're not careful, even in Lagos, the moment you start going beyond a particular continental chef, that is the boundary between the lagoon and it belongs to the federal government. Mm-hmm. And this was created by the Land But don't Peace you Act. agree that, don't you agree that at some point, because you've got to separate the federation yes. from the federal government, right? That's what I'm saying, yes. So the are fed- you not conflating them as one? No, the federal government is one of the arms of government recognized by the constitution. And when I say the federal government, the one that takes the largest the presidency. Yeah. And then we have the states, and you have local governments. And we are talking about restructuring. It's not even only the federal government that violates restructuring. I mean, the federal structure right now. The states are even the worst because the states are taking monies meant for local governments, and they don't conduct local government elections so that they can take control of that money. And it's likely stolen. So they don't allow governors to percolate to Mm -hmm. the grassroots. And this is the thing. Again, we've only got a minute before the break, but I must say this. You mentioned about local government. Yes. President Buhari already signed an executive order that gives local governments the power. If it's not implemented, that executive order is not what the people... But how do we know it's not implemented? The local governments are not getting their funds. They're not getting elections. All right. Are we going on break now? We'll be right back. I told you it's going to be interesting. If you thought you knew, sure, you've seen him on other interviews, not on this one. He's going to get a chance to tell you exactly what he's about. Be right back. Live from the heart of Victoria Island, you're listening to your number one station, 99.3 Nigeria Info. Downfall Conversations will be right back. Thank you. 
And we're back, and I'm still talking to Omoyele Shore. Don't, do you mind me calling you Mr. Revolution? <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds it's really nice and short and easy to remember. Uh, yeah. Huh? You know, it's uh, it's sexy until you get a pretty. <laughs> <laughs> He's also got a sense of humor. <laughs> right, so we were talking about the, you were talking about restructuring, but we have so much to cover. Let's talk power. Yes. One of the things that you said you were going to do in your mandate was to increase power generation, generation. to something like, I don't know, 20, is it 21? 24,000. 24,000. Megawatts. Yeah. How? Uh, it's uh, to immediately, sorry, to immediately uh, expand using a mix of energy sources. I'm very, very pro renewables. Mm -hmm. But I also understand that we're still not exactly there yet. So you, if you rehabilitate all of the turbines working at um, Kanji Dam, mm -hmm. you can increase to almost 500 megawatts more. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to focus on solar immediately. Mm -hmm. have generate like, we may build solar farms that can generate up to 5,000 megawatts. So you want to do solar. Do yes. you think that's why we are not generating enough power? We're, we're not generating enough, but our biggest problem is actually distribution. I exactly. mean, sorry, transmission. Transmission. And then ultimately distribution. Right. So, so our transmission lines are incapable of even evacuating power, which is sometimes at 7,000 megawatts. So we are only able to transmit about 3,000 to 4,000. Right. In that case, then, government will tell you that's why they've got the Siemens project. Do you well, not believe in it? Do you know how long it took for them to even start the cement project? And the cement project has not even touched transmission yet. If, since they started, they've only been able to bring in, I think, two, tra um, two transformers. And they have been celebrating it for two weeks now. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm sure it's still at the port. Well, we must not. celebrate minor wins. <laughs> yes. But don't forget that we had uh, a deal with GE, mm -hmm. and it brought in turbines for some gas-fired plants before mm -hmm. and one of those plants did not leave the port because the port where was uh, dropped i think it's somewhere in sapele or so delta state they didn't have a bridge that could take it across to where it would be hooked onto the national grid and by the time they finished building the bridge i think it was five years after uh the warranty had expired and they couldn't actually use that turbine so part of our problem is that we are not we are still dealing with this very archaic way of working on power projects mm -hmm. one of the things i talk about is to look at egypt look at morocco but that's what peter Obi talks about as well no no he didn't talk about egypt <laughs> but his issue is <laughs> let's focus on okay. what i know it's okay like going to egypt to the trans I mean, the uh, what's it called? The dashboard of a power plant is mm -hmm. not the same thing as understanding Egypt. Mm -hmm. 
So it's Morocco has gotten to a level where they are actually selling power to some European countries. Yeah. Yes. Because people don't understand that power generation, transmission, and distribution is not limited to providing for your country alone. It's big business if you have the capacity. You can sell to the entire West African region. And Nigeria used to okay. do that. Here's the thing, but though. I'm not going to do the Father Christmas one with you. <laughs> Yeah. We look after ourselves yeah, first. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. All of these things cost money. They do. Right? You want to raise us. I think that's three times what we're probably generating at the moment, if not four times yeah. what we're generating at the moment. How are you going to pay for this? So many of these projects can pay for themselves. And this is what Nigerian leaders don't talk about. If this country, let me give you Lagos. If Lagos had 24 hours electricity, do you know that it immediately means that we can also have three shifts of work in Lagos. That is, some people work from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., another group, and another overnight. Industries will spring up, small businesses will start making money, and they'll pay taxes. And you know that Nigeria's tax um, revenue is the lowest on the continent of Africa, not everywhere. That's our but tax where will, GDP but, ratio, you understand? Yeah. But I know what you're asking for. Where will where the initial you get money? capital yes, come yes, from? Yes. yes. So do you know that in case of Siemens, the German government mm -hmm. was willing to fund that project for mm -hmm. us? And there are a lot of companies out there, a lot of funds out there that are willing to support this initial takeoff of this one because they know that even if they invest, their mm -hmm. return on investment will also be a big deal for them. What I won't do is to put our country in a cultural situation where you just go and get money, you don't ask what is the interest rate, and the money comes well, in. The government knows the interest rate they're paying right now. It's well, not that they don't. We can't say they don't. They will tell you that they know the interest rate. That's what they tell the you. The cost of the loans that they've got right yeah, now. But the thing is, what are we borrowing for? Mm. You know, we're borrowing to pay salary. We're mm -hmm. borrowing to but, eat. But, but you've just told me you're going to have to borrow yourself. Whether we're borrowing to do this, whether we're borrowing to do that, we have to borrow. The problem with borrowing is mm -hmm. that every country in the world borrow money. That's including right. Including the U.S. That's the U.S. Right. has a debt clock mm -hmm. on 14th street in new york we used to sit in front of it because it will tell you how much of it is yours yeah <laughs> so but our problem is that our debt to GB gdp is not out of hand our mm -hmm. problem is debt to revenue and the reason is that they are stealing amongst themselves 700,000. i'm sorry uh barriers of oil on a daily basis okay uh, yeah they just said yesterday yesterday this is nigeria wonderful country you know, inverse wonder, is that that they just found a pipeline that's been stealing crude for, that has been around for nine years. Yes, I saw nine that. Nine years. I mean, which country exists in the world where they've been stealing crude from you for nine years? You can't detect it because it's official, of course. They own those pipelines. You know, maybe they figured out another one and they would just fool the public by saying, oh, we just discovered it. And we're all supposed to clap. Well, now that you mentioned fuel, let's talk fuel subsidy. Yes. What are your thoughts? I'm not removing fuel subsidy. You're not? No. Why not? Because the only thing that Nigerians get from the Nigerian crude is that little subsidy. What I will remove is the subsidy that the crooks in our system get. Those people who are importing fake fuel, importing... But oh, subsidy is you know, costing a lot of money. I mean, even Kenya just removed subsidy. The subsidy that cost a lot of money is the subsidy of the elite. Yeah, but Kenya just removed subsidy. Are you saying even Kenya have, is because of the subsidy of the elite? Have you heard that Kenya produced crude before? I'm not aware that they have crude oil in Kenya. We but do. The fact that they are removing subsidy yeah, because, because they realize they don't the produce cost crude oil. They don't, they don't produce so you're crude. saying because we produce... We should... You see, do you know that a certain amount of barrels of crude is allocated to refining locally? Every, okay. every day. Mm -hmm. And regardless of whether we are refining or not, they are still selling it. And it goes into private pockets. I know you might disagree with me. But you know no, I'm not here to disagree you know, with you. I'm you here know, for you to tell I the know, people. I know these people very well. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you the gimmick. Mm -hmm. The gimmick is to make people believe that subsidy is eating up the country. But do you know that kerosene is not subsidized? subsidized? Exactly. Yes. So why mm -hmm. are we not benefiting from it? Diesel is not subs uh, subsidized. Why are we not benefiting from it? Diesel is at 1,000 Arab sometimes. Per because the majority of people do not use diesel. The masses are not. You? But the masses are not dependent on no, diesel. No, no, no. They are dependent the on kerosene are, no. and petrol. No, the masses are dependent on, t on diesel. 
most generators that are running even your office here yeah but that's the offices no. those are private sector no. diesel is the, not the, the, the diesel the, is massively massive I, you know you can quote me it's massively consumed in nigeria that are even very no i'm not saying it's not massively consumed yeah. i'm saying to you so the point i'm making is, is that not the, the, what the, about the, kerosene what about kerosene yes kerosene is so, that is liberalized so, right yes who is subsidizing per kerosene? Nobody. Yeah. It's not it's removed from subsidy. Yeah. So, and the, the, the game they play on us all the time is that the moment we remove the subsidy, we will put this aside for social welfare affairs. Mm -hmm. So, where about the one you got from diesel, from kerosene, from gas, from jet if, uh, A1 fuel? Mm -hmm. Why is it that those benefits are not accruing to the people? Okay. So, it's only that of petrol because it's a game. It's yeah. game. And we are out to end the game because we know the trick. Mm -hmm. We know them inside out. Oh my gosh, we're yeah. running out of time. I wish this show was going. You people, you need to calm down. You know I get to talk to my guest first. I messages everywhere. Everywhere. I will come to you. Whew, I wish we had more time. Right. One of the things you talked about was minimum wage. Yes. Right. You talked about increasing minimum wage mm -hmm. to a hundred thousand. That's whopping. That's three times what it is right now. You call it so, whopping? Well, it's huge I mean, who, compared who, to where we are right now. Who in this country, let me ask you, mm. who in this country can live on 30,000 naira? But that is, not, that, is not, that is not what I'm saying. What mm. I am saying is if you want to increase minimum wage to 100,000, where is that going to come from have again? You, have you asked me mm -hmm. how much it will cost? If we increase minimum wage to by a hundred thousand, how much it will cost you? Yeah. Go ahead, tell it us. It will cost the government only about one point one trillion, one point two trillion naira. Mm -hmm. That's the maximum cost of it, of the way we want to start it. Because the way our minimum wage increase will happen will not happen all across board. Right. That is to say, those who are already enjoying maximum wage. We are not <laughs> well, of course, <laughs> the maximum wages will not fall into the minimum <laughs> exactly. wage space. So we'll, we'll go for, so the most important thing is that we're talking about a living wage here. Yeah. An average worker in Nigeria cannot spend 30,000 naira a month. Mm -hmm. Let me just break it down very quickly for mm -hmm. you. Is if you are going from home to work, Anywhere you are working, even if your office is next door, mm -hmm. you are not spending less than 500 naira now. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So that already, in 30 days, has consumed 15,000 naira. You know, you're going to eat. Do you you're think going to government, pay rent. So it's about... But do you think government earn enough to be able to pay yes, more than 30k? Yes, government earn enough because your... Our lazy senators and House of Rep members are collecting 14 million naira. A month. If you are earning thirty thousand naira a month, mm -hmm. you have to work for thirty eight years to earn what a lawmaker in Nigeria is earning a month. That's unfair. Lecturers, that is university professors. Mm -hmm. All right. Those ones are earning maybe six hundred thousand naira. The maximum wage of any professor is about six hundred thousand. They have to work for eight years to earn the salary of a lawmaker. But if you are not talking about the lawmakers, maybe you say they're working too hard, but I don't see them. They're hardly working, right? It's, think about our very, very lovely officials, like this, the attorney, I mean, the, the, is it the accountant general of the federation, mm -hmm. who just walked away with 150 billion, yeah, but let's, let's, cool let's, billion naira, naira. 150. I get that. We will you, get you, to you, corruption. You defend, divide 150 billion naira hmm, by how many workers mm -hmm. if you are paying 100,000. How many workers that will pay? That's just one person. I get it. Yeah. But let's move away from that. We've got when you say you are going to be paying the people a hundred thousand. You make you it need... sound like it's a hundred thousand dollars. Well, it's a hundred thousand now. I mean, this doesn't even pay it's, this this but, doesn't but, even pay this doesn't even buy recharge card for some of you. Oh <laughs> yeah. I spend I, I promise you I don't spend more than ten thousand naira a month. On recharge on card. It, and if that's even calling yeah, that's, you. That's already so that's already you know, somebody's salary in a month divided into three. My, my point is, let's focus on earnings. That's Where what I'm saying. Are we, you, we, if, we, if we, we can talk about, because we'll get to the point of talking corruption. My gosh, why is we don't we have enough time? Where no, we're, we're, is the corrupt, earning corruption going is just, to come from? Just, we'll I've, talk about corruption after I've, this. I've Literally, discussed, we'll move I've on. I've discussed with you that our tax rates are low. You understand? Mm -hmm. I'm not increasing taxes. I'm just ensuring that we collect taxes. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to increase taxes, but no. you're going to ensure we collect taxes. Yes, that our tax to, 
GDP ratio is too low. Right. Like if we collect, we'll have... A and you're going to get taxes from the masses as well. These same people you're going to give 100 No, if to. you give them electricity, you give them roads, mm -hmm. they will happily pay taxes. You know that many people want to pay taxes in Nigeria, right? Mm -hmm. But the government is not interested in collecting taxes. You know why? Because if, Tell you, me. if you collect taxes from people, they will be on your neck. Or you're behind. Okay. But Nigerian government prefers to just get free money. They don't like to be disturbed. You know, because tax brings about representation. Yeah? What used to cause problems mm -hmm. in Yoruba land, in Igbo land in the past. In, but you in, do know that. It was because just you will see we women won. go and fight. I get because it. Because they're made to pay taxes. Like, what are you doing with the taxes? I get it. Yes. Well, but I do have to say that this APC government, in Lagos State especially, one of the things that you mentioned is... Um, that you're going to do is to empower small and medium-sized enterprises and mm -hmm. all of those things. Or one of some of the things they are complaining, the issues they're complaining about is stealth taxation and over-taxation. FIRS collect <coughs> taxes. APC is priding itself on collecting taxes. LIRS is on Vanex. But anyway, let's move on because the lines are going crazy. You we don't, don't have you enough. You don't want me to talk about APC and the no, tax you will. collection but you, you scams. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So here's the thing. Um, you, the other thing you mentioned about was um, education, I think it is, because I, yes. I had some notes. Let me just look. Yeah. You talked about education. Talk to me about education very quickly. Massive investment in education. Mm -hmm. I have said, we've said this, and we have no apology about it. If I had been the president of Nigeria in 2019, Nigerians missed out on that opportunity, there would have been a strike today. Why? What would you have done? Because... As far back as when I was in the university, I knew what the lecturers were asking for. At that time, they were asking for three billion naira. Mm -hmm. and the Nigerian government won't pay because they don't believe in education. Uh, now they're asking for about one point two trillion naira to be paid. Would you trade. pay them if you were the president? There's six chances I can afford that. Based on because government because it's education. You don't play with education. You so know? so just Look. because Asu asked, Asu will get because it's no education. no. It's not because Asu asked. Asu is not asking you to pay it into their private uh, accounts. Mm -hmm. They're not going to get an alert mm -hmm. from you. They're just saying invest in education, expand education opportunities for citizens. Because you know there are only 1.7 million Nigerian youths going to higher institutions out of 200 million people. That's low. Does everybody need to be in higher institutions? They don't have to be, but we have to allow those who want to go there to go there. What about then? What about the argument that what we need to do is invest more in technical colleges, technical institutions so, that empower? Because not everybody wants to go a, to university. That is the World Bank prescription. No, no, no. That is something is, that happens is, in other... What is not technical about me mm -hmm. that studied geography uh -huh. and I'm a journalist today? Yeah, but just the, obtain there education, also, you, you can do whatever you want with yeah, it. Yeah, but when not everybody needs to get a degree. Yeah. There are some but people, there, there are lots of people. Let people who don't want need. to get degree, get degree. You know mm -hmm. what I would do? Mm -hmm. We can divide the degrees into two. I'm a big fan of community colleges in the US. Mm -hmm. They call it associate degree. You might want to just work as an accountant in local government. You don't want to go too far. Get a two year degree. You what? know? Okay. Yes. So what I would do is convert all the technical, uh, I mean, colleges of education, mm -hmm. uh, polytechnics, uh, into universities. Mm -hmm. So that you can go there and get whatever you want. There's no need for polytechnics and colleges of education. Because anybody, <laughs> I'm anybody... I'm being told there are so many <laughs> questions. Anybody should be able to get oh. a degree from any higher institution in Nigeria. The moment you call it higher, it should go take you to the highest. Highest. Okay, look, I've got... Uh, oh. Okay, where do we start from? Telephones or WhatsApp? Which should I start? My yoga tell me. Okay, they tell me to start from WhatsApp. Sorry, peeps, I'll be answering your calls in a minute. And honestly, you're only going to get 30 seconds to drop your question. You snooze, you lose. This is your lead that I've got here, you know. We can't... Good afternoon, Radio Diva. Don't you dare call me a diva. I'm a broadcaster. Sissy will get to you. Anyway, I am Obina from Shita. My question for Mr. Shore is, when you become the president of Nigeria in 2023, would you be able to resolve the issue of the climate change that is causing flood in some parts of Nigeria? I think you should write them down and I'll read them. No out. worry. That was one of my questions. Um... Hello, Sissi Oge. I commend your level of journalism. Thank you. Yele does as well. He won't say it on air, though. I'm a big fan of Down for Conversations. Yeah, yeah. But this is my first time to reach out. I'm doing so because you have my president on your show. My question to my president, sir. There are a lot of homeless kids and citizens of Nigeria and are either sleeping under the bridge and this has made them become miscreants. How would you approach this, sir? And would we still have Nigerians in those countries 
in those country being without shelter or in this country being without shelter under your presidency i love you sir my name is funke from kuramo okay next question here the infighting family led by oh no no one right hello Sergei. welcome to our guest oh welcome to yes he says thank you i am lucky i am in lucky Shore's manifesto is very beautiful, but I suggest to him to merge with other smaller parties to support Obi to kick out this ruling party. We'll talk about that possible coalition if he's into that later. Next question. Hi, Shore. Hello. I know activism activists often get into politics without any track records of achievement. Apart from the activism, what do you have or have you achieved to make you qualified for this number one city in Nigeria? I'll read this one and then I'll give you a chance to answer. Mm. My question, Mr. Shore, is there any problem between between you and Peter Obi? I am Ben Praise. Okay, you got five minutes. We're running out of time. Yeah. I'm going crazy. So climate change, flooding in Nigeria. Mm. A lot of people don't know that the flooding in Nigeria is not uh, only climate change. Mm -hmm. We've had an issue with a lake mm -hmm. in Cameroon. That's right. Since 1983, they came and begged Nigeria home and figure out how because mm -hmm. we don't have the capability to dam the lake it breaks mm -hmm. when the rainy season comes nigeria didn't do anything about it if nigeria were serious as far back as 89 we could have by now built a tunnel that would be taking that plenty of water to the charge okay Lake that's what they didn't do but we, they yeah. can't so what are we going to do about the climate change that is happening yeah because so it's the, a part of the climate issue. change is the reason we are in full terrorism now because the lake chart has dried up to it's only 10 percent of the lake chart is left and all those Fulani people that used to uh, go around with the uh, the cows used to go there to get water and so what will you do about the certification then yeah. which is what you're talking about effectively well or then a part of how we deal with the certification is solar energy okay you know do you know that if we cover so many of those deserts up with solar panels it will retain water Okay. And we can use it to grow but you can you can grow forest in what is now known as deserts. You're gonna grow a forest. We already have yeah. Sambisa which yeah. which is so, causing us all these problems. <clears throat> I'm just giving that as one of okay. the examples, you know. But there are clear because we don't have time, there okay. are clear delineation for how to tackle climate okay. issues. And we just need to be part of that conversation also globally. Okay. Uh, because it has to do with lifestyle too. Mm -hmm. um, we we are consuming we we're not some of the candidates say they don't even know what is green energy. They don't know what green, <laughs> how to green the country. Okay. So, but you don't have time. Uh, the second uh, question was second the, question. the second question was about housing. That's right. It's part of our program. Homelessness. Yeah. Massively housing in this country. But yes, it's in your manifesto. Yes. So we know how many houses are needed, and we must. It's part of where employment will come for the youth. As There's still money, money, yeah. money, money. Yeah. Money. Yeah. money. Yes, Owoni Koko, But people are reclaiming rivers and seas right in front of you here mm -hmm. spend billions of uh, dollars not mm -hmm. naira, mm -hmm. which could have been used to build a completely new lagos mm -hmm. you understand its priority is understanding lagos is not nigeria though no but Ni what, where do you think the money is coming from at the end of it is all oil money Yes. Okay, whatever. What's the other question? Yes. Um, people saying that uh, we should merge with smaller parties. Well, we'll talk about that. I want yeah. you to hold on to yeah. that. We'll talk so. about that after. Let's answer some calls. Hello, morning. Good, good morning and good afternoon. Sorry, <laughs> All not same as they say. <laughs> no, <laughs> Show me good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. How's everything? Good good idea. Very quickly, 30 seconds. We have lots of people calling. You have a black idea. Why don't you merge with any other smaller parties to form a good government for the country? Thank oh. you. Okay, thank you. Stay listening. You'll get the answer to that later. Hello? Hello? You snooze, you lose. Hello? I can't hear you. You snooze, you lose people. We don't have time. Hello? Hello. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name and where you calling from, please? My name is Ekaite. I'm calling from Agbado. Ekaite, you got 30 seconds. Go. Your question, yes. please. And please, I want to ask him, what is the plan for physically challenge people in his own program? What is his plan? Thank you very much, Ekaite. He will answer. Stay listening. Hello? Stay in one step. Hello? Hello? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name and where are you calling Hello. from? My name is Joyce. 
Okay, Joy, go ahead with I your want question. I to ask him, how are you going to collect our money from this elite that will be taking our resources away? Thank you. Thank you very much. He's, keep listening. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes, good afternoon. Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Obi calling from Ikeja. Obi, go ahead. Your question, please. Uh, yeah, my brother, a lot of programs. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm not, I've not been seeing your food soldiers. I don't know who are those working with you. Please. Okay. Sorry, because you, because you, must, you must be present before you begin to you know, execute your programs. Okay, thank well, you so much. We're going on break right now. When we come back, sorry. Omoyele Sori, the presidential candidate of the African Congress, will be here to answer all those questions and much more. Stay listening. Welcome back to Downfall Conversations. Downfall Conversations will be right back. Have you heard about my shout app? My Shout app is a new security app that serves as a tracker. My Shout app helps your family and friends to know if you're safe or in danger at any time. If you're in danger, open the app, click on any of the four emergency buttons. For accidents, press 1. Kidnapping, press 2. Robbery, press 3. To shout, press 4. Immediately you press any of these buttons. Your friends and family will receive an alert of your emergency with the map of the location. My Shout app is easy to use and designed for everyone. The app works in real time as it updates users' location every five minutes. Give your family and friends peace of mind. Download my Shout app today on Play Store or on App Store for just four dollar ninety nine cents, which is about two thousand one hundred and seven naira. To know how to set up your my Shout account, log on to www.myshout.net. My Shout app. Let your family and friends know you are safe. Download now. Welcome back to Danville Conversations, right here on 99.3 Nigeria Info. 
Okay, we're back. We really don't have time. Honestly, we don't have time. Right, okay. Yele, you heard some of those questions before we went on break. You've got five minutes to answer as many of them as you can. Well, <clears throat> somebody was asking me a question about corruption. That's right. Uh, well, so what would I do to get back all the money? That all the money. Mm -hmm. But I, I would like to hold that till when we talk okay. about corruption what's, what's and security. The, I think some of that question we, was we talk about security later. About my full soldiers. That's where right. They, where are you? Uh, well, they, they're all over the place. But, you know, they just we just started campaigning proper. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to have more people mm -hmm. out there. You know, in this election season, we are contesting against the money bags. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from myself, the f there are four candidates who are former governors who mm -hmm. spent eight years as former governors. And you know how padded these guys are. Yeah. I'm the only candidate until one of them joined me recently that raises money on a daily basis, crowdfunded. So yeah, but you can't be the only one because I understand. I'm um, saying on it publicly. Yeah. Yes, that's the only one joined me because I started this 2019. About obedience are also raising money. That's why I said they just joined. They just. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, what yeah. have I got here? Yeah. Um, right, let me look at this question. Here we go. Cecil Gekola from Ilukwe Jew. Kudos to Comrade Shirley. Please, who owns the prepaid meters for the disc? Oh, that's. You can ask your supplier that. Right. Your guest in the studio is absolutely right on diesel. Nigerian economy is run on diesel. Higher the prices of diesel, higher the cost of products and higher services. Absolutely. Many businesses have shut shop, have shut shop of late because of high cost of diesel. Yeah. In some countries like India, petrol is sold at higher prices so as to subsidize diesel because of its mass consumption. So what you're saying is what he's saying is sell petrol at a higher with oh guess who's here? Yvonne. Mm -hmm. It's news time. See what I mean? This is what they do to me. It's two o'clock. Two o'clock. The headline news on ninety-nine point three Nigeria Info. On the headlines this hour, President Buhari assures. Readiness to address security situation confront confronting Nigeria. Federal government declares Monday a public holiday to celebrate Eid al Mulid. Appeal court will today rule on Asu's day of execution order. Senate committee gives code of conduct duo two weeks to settle internal crisis, while Senate confirms 19 resident electoral commissioners for INEC. INEC chairman Mahmoud Yakubu tasks Guild of Corporate Online Publishers to curb fake news. House of Reps approves 8.4 trillion naira borrowing and 6.3 trillion naira debt service. For Life Tinubu returns to Nigeria after 12 days away. MC Oluoma introduces barcode to checkmate criminal activities among bus drivers in Lagos. Veteran Hollywood actor Kenneth Okonkwo explains PPLD's seventh state agenda. A grieved PDP governor, re uh, governor reports a tick with the party board of trustees lists his conditions. PDP appoints directors for a speaker's campaign committee. Rivers Assembly passes motion to de-recognize Omehia as the former governor. Federal government says Ethiopia's uh, suspension of visa and arrival to curtail insecurity. Oliver and Saint Thailand mourn the deaf policeman kill. At least 37 people in child care center. FBI set to charge President Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, with tax crimes. U.S. President Biden says the risk of Armageddon highest since Cuban Missile of 1962. In sports, Super Eagles slipped to 32nd position in latest FIFA ranking. And those are the headlines this hour. This is a Dafa Conversation with Uwechi Bakari Yusuf. I'm Ivan Ohasu. You're listening to 99.3 Nigeria Info. Good afternoon. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. No, it's okay. Let me explain. It's okay. It's okay. Now. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, she, 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 On 99.3 Nigeria Info, your mic is always, always on. on. Let's talk. Right. So, before I go back to you, the calls because we're literally in the last 20-odd minutes or so. 
Let's talk security. Yes. And let's talk corruption. Which one do you want to talk about first? Mom, we can do. Go ahead, security. security. Yes. Um, people must. Understand. What is your solution for yes. security? The solution is to just break it into three solutions. Tell us. The media one is to do whatever we can right now to stop the bleeding. And I have How? said, I'll repeat here, that if it requires bringing in mercenaries into Nigeria, I will do it. That sounds scary. It is scary, but you know what? The Nigerian security system has also become mercenary to the elites and greed. Mm. Yes. Wouldn't you say that's ra that's a huge, huge accusation? It is. Um, I'm a presidential candidate. I can defend it anywhere. Defend it. That they are corrupt. What you've just said. That they are corrupt and, you know, that they will do anything for money. To the point that even if it's not in the interest of the country, they will do it. We found policemen, soldiers who are working with Boko Haram. You know, some of them even wrote a joint letter recently that was published that they have already started taking to crime because they are underpaid and that they are... Is that a good enough excuse, though? It's not a good enough, but it's clear that they're incapable of stop solving the problem right now. And um, <coughs> we need to solve that problem. Our citizens are more important than our national pride. Mm -hmm. Because if we are not careful, there will be no nation to be proud of. If bandits, terrorists, I don't even know why you're calling, we separate bandits from terrorists anyway. They're all doing the same job. Yeah. And doing a damn good job at decimating the country. Mm -hmm. so, so you said three. Yes. Right. So the second, the second aspect one. is, of course, to start building a security system, put in place a security system now that will be able to tackle and foresee some of these threats that was coming in the future. And it involves training, proper training. It involves remuneration. It revolved troop rotation on time because a lot of troops have been fighting for five years. Now you keep them in the first place. They are atrophied. Uh, it involves you know, gathering intelligence, analyzing them, and understanding what threats we're faced with. A lot of people think that our old threats, our security threats are only physical, you know, but this national security threat, you're talking about just now how much crude is stolen on a daily basis. So Those are national security issues. Yes. You know, and there's a homeland here that needs to be taken care of. Where that comes into play is who are who are Nigerian citizens living on Nigerian soil today? You don't even know them. Right. Yes. So you're talking immigration. Yes. So so part of it. But the final one, before I forget, or before we forget, is ensuring that there's economic security for people in this country. Right. You don't put youth to work, you're deceiving yourself. All those twenty million kids, according to UNESCO, mm. who are not in school. You better be preparing for their prison uniforms in the future if you don't send them to school. And if you don't pay people you don't pay pensioners, you don't have in place how to protect, like somebody was asking about fiscally challenged people. That's right. How that to was protect. the other question, yes. yes. What are you going to do yes. about those? <coughs> those ones, I don't like to call them fiscally challenged people because the so-called fiscally challenged people in Nigeria are even doing better at the Olympics than the non-fiscally challenged Nigerians anyway. They are the ones doing us proud. But it's a range of support system for them. It's part but of the social are, yeah. security that I'm talking about. Right. Like you walk around in this country, even in Lagos, where they pride themselves as having public buses, mm -hmm. you don't have systems in place to even help someone using a wheelchair to get on a bus. You don't have in any federal office that I've come to in this country, I've been to a lot of federal offices in Abuja, how a physically challenged person, a wheelchair-bound person can even get in an office except five people carry them. You know, So you don't have scholarship for them, you don't have special schools for them. It's not until recently that we even start translating our public news uh, through, you know, through uh, for people who might have hearing disabilities. So it ha there has to be a national policy that makes life easy for this population because they are huge. They are huge. I don't. I hate okay. to. I hate to only use them when there are elections. You go and post with pictures for them. You will suddenly realize that they are there. As soon as the elections are over, nobody talks about that. You cannot do it by doing giveaways. There has to be national policy for okay. them. And I don't I don't see that yet on the scale that I swear because we that's why I said I believe for there is a, a lot there of is a parastatal that looks it's after the, the physically it's, it's, challenged, it's, which means there must be a policy. Yeah, they, Otherwise not, the parastatal wouldn't have anything it's to not work a, to. The fact that we're even using a parastatal that shows that we don't think that they are part of society. It's just what I say about Ministry but, for but Paris Ministry of, are arms of yeah, government no, that's supposed to like, make it's just like I'm saying things closer I, to the when people. I, when I go crazy when people say 
Ministry of Women Affairs, you know, and everybody's like clapping. I was like, where is the Ministry of Man Affairs? It's discrimination. That's a whole different debate. <laughs> exactly. You're trying to trigger me. Yeah. That's a whole different debate. So, but, Look, um, so let's be serious. Let's talk about, about corruption. Yes, yeah, so Cor- corruption. Yeah. I don't even know where to start. But Well, what's he, how are you well, going to... So, so, okay, so but here's the my, thing. My first priority with regards to corruption is to prevent it. Because we have learned a big lesson that the moment how people take... How do you take, prevent corruption? Well, technology is a big deal out of it. You know, okay. Something even as important as blockchain technology can help us prevent corruption. How? You see, our procurement contracting system in this country is... Still you have e procurement already, though. Who is using it? Are you sure they're not using it? They're not. They're because, circumventing it. But oh, that's, well, but then yeah. that's different. Yes. No. I'm Systems saying that, people process. And if you, are, if you are saying e-procurement, e-procurement is not enough if you only create a form on a computer, fill it, and it goes to the person. No. Mm-hmm. I'm saying where corruption happens is not the paper. It is where the payments are made. You know, And you must have a means of trigger that says if a minister has just approved a certain amount of money and is traveling through the pipeline, we can stop it. Checks I use balances. an example mm-hmm. that I used to carry a credit card for a company I work for, mm-hmm. Catholic Charities in the U.S. If you buy anything more than five, fifteen dollars $15, if you buy foil, the, the, the credit card will be declined. Because they don't, they don't want to get to yeah, the point where they just... Yeah, they put a limit yes. there, right? So even, you don't overspend. Even your vehicle so you are driving... If you go more than yeah, but that's, 60 yeah, miles but that's per hour. that's on a very it's, micro level. No, it's, it's, now they're you're not talking micro. about the whole country. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that these things are important. I'm just giving you small examples right. of how you can prevent corruption. You know, I'm saying... Do you really believe you can prevent corruption? Oh, absolutely. I've done it as an individual. To what percentage? Or to the barest minimum. I've done it as an individual. An individual. I started a website 2006. And it went after almost every corrupt person at one time or the other. I was able to prevent corruption just by proactively publishing a lot of things that are in the pipeline that would have cost Nigeria millions of dollars, if not billions. I, I did it to the point that Nigeria that don't used to jail people were jailing people based on reports that I did. You understand? I know they hated me for it, but if I could do it on the laptop, you can imagine if I'm president of Nigeria. I'm not saying... The kind of president that doesn't know how to use computers, because <laughs> part of our problem is just we have too many analog people uh, on yeah, the horizon. Hey. Yeah. So, so you see, look, I had I had Peter Obi sit there in was that it? exact same seat where you are at. Is that was that, was that <laughs> gone on purpose? <laughs> That's the special chair for who, special people. Who's taller? <laughs> I say nothing, exactly. right? So, so here's the thing. I had Peter Obi sit there, and he's been governor. He did two terms as governor of an Amber state. Yeah. And he said, he said exactly the same thing, that he was able to stop corruption because, of course, if the top is not rotten, the bottom can't be. It's not enough. He, he showed how he was able to implement it because he was the chief security officer of a state. You haven't been that. Mm. Even though you've done this example, and I said to him at the time, the state is different to the whole country. And I'm saying to you, you haven't been governor of a state, so you haven't tested your your ideas or your initiative, and you think it's going to work across the country? Of course. I've, I've never been governor before. Yeah. But I've used my own personal experience to fight corruption on a global scale. Okay. I was detecting homes, you know, bought by Nigerian governors or okay. government officials that are in millions of dollars. Okay. Detecting them on my own, making them public to the extent that some of them were caught and some of them were made to, res- you know, return those money. The U.S. had used my reports to recover money before they eventually came back to Nigeria. Okay. So I'm not just making up these stories. It's th- these are things you can verify, you know, Corruption can happen at any level, at the top, at the lowest. In fact, it is known in Abuja that what the, the people they call uh, permanent secretaries mm-hmm. are more deadly, mm-hmm. corruption-wise, than even ministers. Yeah. In fact, it is not until they show you how to steal, it is then that as a minister, you get enough to steal. So what I'm saying that if an individual, an mm-hmm. individual like myself, mm-hmm. could have put in place an initiative that has been fighting corruption now for about 16 to 20 years of my life. I started fighting corruption when I was in the university. Okay. How will it be difficult for me as president 
to know how to trace money, track money, and ensure that they don't leave the country before you know, we, we get them back. Because the moment they leave, is difficult. Then let me tell you one thing, mm -hmm. and because people say this all the time, mm -hmm. why bother if people have already stolen money? Yes, well, we I don't say that, but yeah, go ahead. I will bother because we are still getting alerts mm -hmm. from Abacha. And Abacha died in 1998. Yeah, but there's a whole... There, there's the, Look, we're not even going to talk about that because no, apparently no. some will tell you mm. that that Abacha loot was not so much stealing they were put away. However, How can you somebody mentioned, even say that? <laughs> you mentioned was, Abuja. Yeah. I think it's a good opportunity for us to discuss. You mentioned one of the things you, you, you mentioned was about, you know, the stealing that's going on in Abuja and everything. Do you think Abuja as the capital is a drain on our resources? No, I, I think what is a drain on our resources is that we we still maintain this large I and mean, a huge bureaucracy of governance. Right. I want to reduce that. I want to make government more compact mm -hmm. and uh, more efficient and less expensive. Mm -hmm. And one of my proposals is to get rid of the Nigerian Senate. If we can get to... You want to get rid of the Senate? Yes. Yet you want a presidential system. You've said on this show... No, you can, you, have a, you can have a presidential, presidential system. system of government that has a unicameral legislative system. Right. They have that in um, South Korea. Right. And recently, they also got rid of their Senate in Senegal. So it's nothing new. It's nothing new. So if you're not going to get rid of Abuja, you like Abuja, you, you agree that Abuja should stay as... It's the capital, but right. what we can do is to reduce but the number of people who But that same are... capital has cost us some close to $400 billion in yeah. the 40 years or so that yes. it's been created. Yes, if we, until such a time that... Imagine we... what could be done with that money. No, please, I agree with you. What I'm saying is that we sh we'll get to a point where physical offices will be eliminated. Okay. But it's not going to happen overnight. You know, I, I, I do it. I Yes. Okay. Apparently, I've got to go. I need to pick up calls and answer. This is crazy. We don't have much time left, gosh. And I still haven't talked to you about what happens. Hello, good, about afternoon, the go good afternoon. What's your name? Quickly. Ten this seconds. Is Ahmed, this is Ahmed Kuti from Uruguay. Ahmed, put your question through, please. This is uh, my early show, right? Thank you. How are you? Good afternoon, Good afternoon, sir. my brother. Victoria Sata. Thank you. Yes, I like your ideology. I know your ideology stands out. Mm -hmm. But as you and I know... There is no perfect human being. I would have loved... We uh, need questions. You've got 10 seconds. Quickly, quickly. I would have loved if you can merge with uh, a party, a smaller party, not APC and PDTO. We will be talking about that after. Stay listening. Thank you so much. Hello? Hello? You snooze, you lose. Hello? Good afternoon, ma. Good afternoon. What's your <coughs> name? Where are you calling from? Ma, my name is Kingsley. I'm calling from Jack Conde. Kingsley, go on ahead. Put your question through, please. Ma, I like that man very well. The man's well, name I is Omar Yelishin Chowore. Yes, I like him so much. Okay. And like a person who was born in Jack Conde for street. May he help us first. We go vote for him. We are hungry. May he vote. May he do something for us. Oh. Agbado, he do <laughs> shaga. No, we get where we even they live. We don't get where we they live. We they live for Paco. But listening to radio station there, your yeah, street world, because I know them, I work with them, I'm a driver. Mm -hmm. They know they help us, so. mm -hmm. but they help us first, the common workers in the streets. Now we go come and vote for them. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. He's heard you. Hello. 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 Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good What's your name, please? Yes, I just wanted to say to show that America is 360 something years, Nigeria is just 66. Don't give up. It doesn't okay. matter. A child or destiny does not die before his time. Okay. The people are saying are good, so continue to on. Don't give up. It doesn't matter. Whatever that happens in 2023, there is a platform. Like, we got to hurry up with this prayer. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Ah, yeah, com comrade. One, you've got 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. Give. Koboko. Uh, Koboko, your line is gone. I don't have the time, unfortunately. Koboko. Ah, sorry, you snooze, you lose. Hello? Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? My name is Shegun. Right, Shegun, go ahead. You have 10 seconds. I'm calling from Bariga, yes. Go ahead. I, in, the, in, the, in the face of the problem that we have in Nigeria right now, my question is this. We have a serious ethnic problem in Nigeria. It's a very serious one. That is why we have so, that's the main cause of the insecurity. Now, I want to direct my, my question is this, Shore. 
I want to ask you what exactly will you do about the restructuring when it comes to the ethnic problem we have in Nigeria? Thank mm-hmm. you very much. Okay. Restructuring an ethnic problem, right. Any more calls? Um, hello, are you there? Uh, you them, my own baby. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> Mr. Frank, go ahead. Give your questions, please. You've got 10 seconds. My brother, I'm sure. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, now. How possible is it in this Nigeria for us to return dollar? At least for 200 naira per dollar. Okay, you want 200 naira per dollar. Is it possible? Is it possible? For us to be refining our own crude oil okay. here in this country. Okay. Officially. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to answer one last call and then I'm going to give Shore a chance to answer your questions. Hello? Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Yeah, my name is Sam. I'm calling from uh, Okota. Go ahead, Sam. Yes, I want to tell. I want. I want to. I want to ask uh, uh, Shawere certain questions. Mm-hmm. In twenty, in 20 you have one question or one? Okay, no problem. <laughs> in twenty fourteen, yeah, yeah, he joined. He joined the ruling party, which is the APC, mm-hmm. through his uh, Sahara the, the reporter, mm-hmm. to bring to bring down Good Luck Jonathan government. Mm-hmm. He was among the people. What's the question, please? I'm literally running out of time. We really don't have he time. He criticized the government and said there was no subsidy. Mm-hmm. And today he's on the radio to tell Nigerians that there is subsidy, that it's going to remove subsidy. I want him to say something about that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. There you go. We we'll start back forward. Go yeah. ahead. Over to you. You've got. Uh, Let you actually have three minutes because okay. we're closing. There soon. was never a time I said there was subsidy today. Okay. I said I'm not removing what doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Uh, that the subsidy they have is the subsidy of the elite. Okay. So he's wrong. It's also wrong to say that I joined uh, the ruling party. Well, you are not a member of APC? I was never a member of APC. I've never joined a political party before in 2018. I voted for the first time in my life in 2019. Okay. All so, right. But um, I want to say that the biggest enemy of the Jonathan regime was Jonathan himself and his ministers. In everybody oh knows. no! Okay, we can do that. You need to answer more questions. Yes. So the other question. Uh, the other question is restructuring and ethnicity. Mm-hmm. I've said it. All the ethnic groups mm-hmm. need to go to a table where the restructuring they're advocating for can happen. Okay. So it's not something that can be done by reform or modification of a constitution that had no legitimacy in the first place. The 1999 constitution is a fraudulent document imposed on the Nigerian people by mm-hmm. the Nigerian army mm-hmm. or military. Mm-hmm. It's unacceptable. Okay. Um, the, somebody was asking if we can make the dollar 200 to... Well, he said, is it possible? Is it, it's, and is it possible pos- for us possible, to refine our oil in this yes, country? Yes, we can refine our... You oil. think it's possible to it make it $200, $200 to one? We I mean, must, 200 naira to one dollar? If we start if, with all these policies... Do I make promises? Or? I'm not making promises. I'm telling you possibilities. Okay. You understand? That if you start producing the way I described to you with small businesses, big businesses, all those companies are run to Ghana. Michelin and the rest of them will be back in Nigeria if you have electricity. What, can, what, what would you say you can bring it down to? We're currently at about 7.30, 7.40. We vacillate between so that. You know, one what of the things you? that needs to be done immediately mm-hmm. is to get rid of the multiple rates, the fraudulent multiple rates at mm-hmm. the CBN, mm-hmm. so that nobody has a right to sell dollar at 350. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, buy at 350 and go and sell at 7.30. Mm-hmm. That should be completely... Let's have one official rate okay. that controls... Even what goes on in the black market. Okay. Uh, the other question that somebody asked, yeah, Jack on day. Asked, he lives in Jack on day. Yes, yes. He's literally living in the ghetto. We talked what about housing. Paco, we talked about housing. Paco. Yeah. You know, one day someone drove me to Banana Island, and I was disappointed that that's the place they call Banana Island because it's like public housing for me in the U.S. Right? Two hours of rain, that place is flooded. I literally, I. I I'm telling I you, I can't even speak. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, so this is this is what they call projects. Yeah, but 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 that's not the point. The yes. point of the matter is, this, there are Nigerians who are living yeah, in because ghettos. Because we are not building houses for them. But so an island to you might be the ghetto. That is the dream the, for many the, Nigerians. That's that's because they've never seen housing, public housing before. Yeah, but yes. through Larry, oh. we have public housing now. Oh, how many? Jack on the built public housing. That's what's the last time public housing. That's what was I'm saying. Built. So are you going so to be saying is that rather than building a bunch of, you know, overpriced concrete in front of a lagoon 
is not what is going to solve public housing. Public, that, that place should be public houses. Okay. You know. Let, now, before we go, because my guy here, I know. You see when she sits like that? She's she about to throw to me off air. <laughs> so, here's the thing. Now, in all honesty, that gentleman that called from Jack and Day, he doesn't care where you build the houses. He just wants a home. Um, exactly. Home. And yeah. I think you and I are, yeah. are um, we agreed on that. Yes. Here's the thing. When you started, when we started this, you did say, I am going to be the next president of Nigeria. Yes. Of Nigeria. Yes. What if you don't win? I cannot imagine a situation where the brightest and the best and the finest will not win the next election. <laughs> but what yeah. if you don't win? We don't. I'm not calculating not to win. You know. But you see, what is important is that these ideas are out there. And the moment they win, we win. And I'm not speaking philosophically. I think Nigeria and young people, old people, strong and weak, should understand that we wasted too much of our time. Would you be interested in a coalition? If the coalition carries our kind of ideas, which, others which are, of the at parties? liberty. Which of the parties would any you party, partner? Which, any, which one? No, I, I could not and I cannot put myself in a position where I'll be boxing to saying that the party is the party I will join because I have not seen any of these parties with the kind of ideologies that can attract our attention. Okay, here's, yes. here's, here's something, right? For the first time since we've been having a conversation, I heard your American accent. Oh. Now, you have, and you've always teased me about my British accent, mm -hmm. you know, I grew up there. Here's the thing you have a green card. Yes. You could choose to live in America. If I want. But here to. you are. Yes. What brought you back? I was just, uh, I lived tw 20 years in America and I told myself that, yes, yeah, a beautiful place. People make it be made it beautiful, mm -hmm. made it livable, mm -hmm. uh, made, made it uh, a country that's, you know, all encompassing, even though we don't want to talk about inadequacies of the American society mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. here. And that our country, Nigeria, is probably the best place to live mm -hmm. if we get it right. So you came to make it so better. So I came, to, I came back to make it better. Excellent. And now my green card is even not useful to me anymore, anymore. Right. yeah because i've been out of uh, i've been out of status okay for some three years now so now here we die as the same as but I've, now here it's we always day, been like now that here for we me. die you know. final question yes. before we are thrown off oh, air yes. what keeps you up at night ah oh, man everything one one that's that key thing about nigeria that keeps you up at night oh man i just kind of think like how could we have such vibrant people mm -hmm. that are led by dumb people? I'm <gasps> sorry to use the word dumb because it has, you know, disab connotations. disability connotations, mm -hmm. you know. But I get yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. So it drives me crazy that mm -hmm. we can get it right when we have no people who can make it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that sometimes makes me feel miserable at night mm -hmm. and it's depressing. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, have I got time to answer to... She, see, my ogre mm -hmm. has said, you people, it's not me, don't blame you. It is my ogre that is throwing us off. Omoye Le Shiwari, you've got to come back because you've got Absolutely. a whole five months. Absolutely. Are you prepared? Yeah. How I'm, prepared are you? I'm always prepared. I came prepared from the time. You've got five months. Can you afford to keep going? I mean, I did Have you raised enough money? I, need, I, I spent more than five months doing this in 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. I only did in campaign. I campaigned in 35 states in Nigeria. Right. And I campaigned in about seven countries abroad, including four in Canada, about seven cities in the U.S., four cities in Australia, South Africa, Ghana. Mm -hmm. I went to Spain, Italy, Germany. There's nowhere mm -hmm. where there are Nigerians that I didn't get to in 2018. Right. I was practically like flying red eye, as they say in the U.S. So like just fly, you wake up on one side of the world. Before you know it, you are back to another part of the world. Okay, and she wants back to in throw Nigeria. us off. Yes. <laughs> we have to go, she's saying. Thank you. Omoyele Shore, thank you so, so, uh, so it's much. always a pleasure. You've got to come back. Absolutely. All right, we'll, we'll continue from where we left off. All right. Because I still have so many questions. Yes. Thank you. Right, contact. Okay. Yes. Those of you who need to contact, because we had some questions about... Yeah, that's our phone number contact. where you can call us. Right, you, you can call help. if you want to join um, African... Action, Ac Ac Action African Congress. Ac African, African Action, Action Congress. Congress. See, I put my teeth back in. Hey. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, the number is plus two three four if you're abroad eight zero three two seven four two 
0803-274-2181. Again, 803, that's 0803 274 2181. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Have a good Thank weekend, you. people. They're throwing me off here. Bye. Join the conversation no matter where you are. Download our mobile app by searching Nigeria Info FM on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Also, get news updates and sports, entertainment, news, and current affairs right on the app. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. Talk. And I want to assume that you would run because I want to give the listeners context for the conversation. In 2019, you were running late to um, Atiku Abubakar. What did you learn then that you will not repeat this time? Yes, when is the president coming out to address us? There's a few things. One, I have a burden and a passion for young people. The fact that you have elected a man does not mean then you begin to order him around. The president will do whatever is good for the country at any given time. M- Mr. Adeshino, isn't the president responsible to the people? What should the next president do to root out stakeholders who are complicit? You fire them. Those that need to be fired, they're fired. It's looking like the brand new Chelsea attacking with so much fluidity. Now, what can you say about that, Martin? I know you follow Chelsea quite closely. I live close to the Chelsea training ground. That's what you mean by that. I'm not <laughs> a Chelsea.